Skateboarding may have started out as a simple outdoor pastime, but in the last few decades, it's evolved into a popular thrill sport. Professional skateboarders are known for performing spectacular aerial maneuvers, achieving speeds and heights the early skateboarders could never have imagined. In the 1930s, thrill-seeking kids began attaching their metal roller skate wheels to wooden crates. Little did they know this would one day spawn a worldwide phenomenon. The boxes evolved to boards in 1958, when some California surfers invented sidewalk surfing, something to do when bad weather prevented them from riding the waves. They attached roller skate wheels to wooden planks, then coasted through the streets. Pretty soon, the fad caught on in cities throughout the United States. The deck, the part of the skateboard you stand on, is made up of several thin sheets of wood called veneers. Inexpensive boards use fewer sheets and lesser quality woods. These high-end boards use a full seven sheets of top quality maple. Only the top and bottom veneer sheets will actually show, so their exposed side is sanded smooth, and the other side gets a coat of glue. The inside sheets, meanwhile, go through the glue spreader, which saturates both sides. This adhesive is specially formulated to withstand vibration and shock. Workers stack 35 sheets of veneer, the equivalent of five skateboard decks, and place them in a mold. Skateboards vary in size and shape, so there's a different mold for each model. A press applies 44 tons of pressure, compacting the sheets and bending them to the shape of the mold. Excess glue squeezes out the sides, binding the five decks into one block. They'll be separated later. The block comes out after three hours. Now they drill two sets of holes through the block. These are for mounting the front and back trucks, the pivoting metal axles that enable the skateboard to turn. Now it's time to give the rectangular block a skateboard contour. They select a template in the general shape of the model they're making. It has pins underneath that fit snugly in the truck holes they've just drilled. This holds the template still while they do what's called the rough cut, sawing around the template leaving a one inch margin. Cutting off the excess separates the five decks. Now they contour each deck individually. Using a precise template, they run the deck against the cutting blade until they have the final shape. Now, using a router, they round off the top and bottom edges. Then they smooth all the surfaces against a drum sander. Now they switch to a buffer, which uses a combination of brushes and fine grit sandpaper to remove any rough wood fibers. The deck is now perfectly smooth. The next stop is the finishing room, where they first spray the decks with a colorless primer. This seals the pores in the wood veneer so they won't absorb the coat of lacquer that comes next. The primer takes two hours to dry. Next, they spray on a coat of clear or colored lacquer. It leaves a protective high gloss finish. The lacquer also takes two hours to dry. The final step of the finishing process is applying the decoration. The bold graphic designs are printed on plastic sheets. The skateboard factory either buys them ready-made or produces them in-house using its own silkscreen printing equipment. Workers center the design sheet, then feed the deck through a machine that applies heat and slight pressure simultaneously. 
The heat, 390 degrees Fahrenheit, induces a chemical reaction that melts the ink and lacquer. When the plastic comes off, the deck is finished. Decks of this caliber are sold unassembled in specialty stores. They're designed for serious riders who want to customize their skateboards. They pick and choose from different types of trucks, wheels, bearings, even the bolts that hold everything together. All these factors determine how fast or how fancy their skateboard will move and maneuver. If you have any comments about the show, or if you'd like to suggest topics for future shows, 